students today we are going to discuss vitamin b6 which is also known as pyridoxin okay now vitamin b6 is a collective term for pyridoxin pyridoxal pyridoxamine all these are derivatives of pyridin okay they differ only in the nature of the functional group that is attached to the ring okay so this is pyridoxin which is pyridoxal the alcoholic form the alcohol form this is pyridoxal that is the aldehyde form this is pyridoxamine the amide form okay so because of these functional groups they have these names this is the alcohol pyridoxal pyridoxal and pyridoxamine the biologically active form of this vitamin is pyridoxal phosphate okay which is also known as plp and pyridoxamine phosphate dietary sources rich sources of the vitamin are yeast rice polishings germinal portion of various seeds and cereal grains and egg yolk moderate amounts are present in liver kidney muscle fish muscle fish highest concentration occur in royal jelly that you get from b the recommended dietary allowance it is difficult to establish a recommended dietary allowance in human because human uh, because quantity needed is not large there is less quantity that is needed and bacterial synthesis in intestine provides a portion of the requirement so we already can synthesize this vitamin by ourselves by the intestinal bacteria requirement of vitamin b6 increases with increased protein intake in adults it is 2 mg per day in infants it is 0.3 to 0.4 mg per day in patients receiving anti tubercular treatment with isoniazid requirement of vitamin b6 increases to an extent okay we'll talk about it later ki kya hota intestinal absorption vitamin b6 is absorbed in the jejunum and ileum by passive diffusion the mechanism of action and the functions i should say reaction types transamination the transfer of amino group that is oxaloacetate and glutamate when an amino acid is taken away it, it is converted into aspartate and alpha keto glutarate this is a, re, a reversible reaction okay deamination taking away the amino group serine is converted into pyruvate and the amino group is uh, is uh, dissociated okay decarboxylation histidine when decarboxylated is converted into histamine condensation glycine and succinyl coa condense to make delta amino levulinic acid so transamination deamination decarboxylation and condensation these are some reactions which are very important and these are the mechanism of action or functions of vitamin b6 further functions okay it acts as a coenzyme for kino uh, kino renin reninase okay uh, that is b6 deficiency niacin synthesis from tryptophan does not take place uh, in this okay then synthesis of sphingomyelin uh, you you can just uh, you can just uh, understand that it, it it acts as a coenzyme then it is it is used in the synthesis of sphingomyelin it is used in the intra mitochondrial fatty acid synthesis it is required for active transport of amino acids through cell membrane and intestinal absorption of amino acids then it acts as a constituent of muscle phosphorylase okay that is needed in the breakdown of muscles then in porphyrin synthesis okay in b6 deficiency heme synthesis suffers and leads to anemia okay you know porphyrin synthesis is uh, needed for heme synthesis and then hemoglobin so if there is a deficiency it will lead to anemia okay these all were the functions now if there is a deficiency of vitamin b6 
if there is a deficiency of vitamin B6, one thing is epileptiform convulsion in infants that is fits in infants. How? There is lower activity of glutamic acid decarboxylase, okay? lowering the GABA in the protein. GABA is a neurotransmitter in the protein. So, it, it can act when glutamic acid decarboxylase is working. But if there is lowered activity of glutamic acid decarboxylase, there is lowering of GABA in the brain and thus it, it results in fits or convulsions in infants. Then I already told you that a pyridoxin responsive anemia that is a hypochromic microcytic anemia called as sideroblastic anemia with high serum iron levels and hemosideresis of liver, spleen and bone marrow may occur. There, see, there will be iron but there may no be, there, there might not be heme. So, hemoglobin cannot be formed and the serum, uh, serum iron is increased which may then get deposited in liver which is hemosideresis of liver, spleen and bone marrow. In B6 deficiency, heme synthesis suffer and iron cannot be utilized. So, it has to go and get deposited in the liver, spleen and bone marrow. These are some histological pictures showing your uh, microcytic anemia. Okay. Now, I already told you that in uh, anti-tuberculous therapy, there is a drug isoniazid, rifampicin and all. Isoniazid when given in a tu uh, for tuberculosis, isoniazid what, do, what it does, it forms a hydrozone complex with pyridoxin resulting in incomplete activation of the vitamin, okay? In incomplete activation of the vitamin. Thus, you have to give more pyridoxin when given isoniazid, okay? it may cause neuritis and neuropathy, okay? The deficiency may cause neuritis and neuropathy. Therapeutic uses, it is used to treat nausea, vomiting in early pregnancy and uh, commonly with uh, in conjunction with other medications which are found safe and effective in pregnancy and it may be beneficial in cancer, okay? Parkinsonism and vitamin B6. They say there is higher intake of vitamin B6 may decrease the risk of Parkinsonism uh, protecting the brain cells from damage caused by free radicals. Okay? So, it is that means it is good for Parkinsonism. But they also say that it is a double edged sword that means that it is also known to increase the metabolism of Parkinsonism medications such as levodopa and should be used cautiously. That means a patient who is a person who is not having this disease, if vitamin B6 is taken regularly, he might be protected from this disease. Parkinsonism is a disease of old age with all that uh, physical symptoms and memory loss and all. Then if a person, a person is already has this disease, Parkinsonism and he's, the disease to treat is levodopa. Okay? So, if you give vitamin B6 in that person who's already, who already has this Parkinsonism, then what happens? This uh, vitamin B6 increases the metabolism of that medication. That means, if it is gov given for a 24-hour period, one tablet per 24-hour period, if vitamin B6 is taken with that, it might just get metabolized in 12 hours. That means, the dose cannot be effective in the body because it has been metabolized in 12 hours rather than 24 hours. So, the 12 hours util the, will utilize the medi medication, the uh, next 12 hours are not utilizing the medication, there is no medication to be utilized. So, that is why it is known as double edged sword. Okay? So, a 28 year old woman presents to the emergency room after having a generalized tonic clonic seizure that means a fit. Okay? She has a history, uh, she has no history of a seizure disorder, she does not have fits and all, but she is currently receiving isoniazid prophylaxis after having a positive PPD test with no sign of active tuberculosis. She took a skin test which is positive um, for a tuberculosis though she does not have any symptoms, she has been given uh, isoniazid as a prophylactic treatment. Okay? 
Now, physical examination is significant for mild peripheral neuropathy, okay, manifesting a decreased sensation to light touch and pin prick in all distal extremities. She has neuritis also and neuropathy. Now, when her blood tests uh, are done, they reveal a sideroblastic anemia. Okay. So, you begin to suspect that her symptoms are related to her isoniazid treatment. So, she was given isoniazid as a prophylactic treatment, but vitamin B6 was not being given. Okay. So, this person developed a vitamin B6 deficiency, she developed seizures, she developed the anemia, she developed the neuritis and neuropathy. So, this is deficiency of vitamin B6. So, hopefully you understood vitamin B6 and we will be doing the next vitamin in the next lecture and um, try going through the uh, lecture and then through the books also. Okay? Thank you very much.